Pokemon is the perfect example of game theory. No, 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 not game theory, but game theory, the branch of economics that studies how people make simultaneous decisions. We'll get into the specifics of Pokemon in a little bit, but first let's talk about the basics of game theory. Game theory is generally a setup with two agents making decisions, we'll just call them people. And those combinations of decisions lead to a payoff combination for each of our participating parties. The easiest way most textbooks visualize game theory is with a matrix. Let's use an example of McDonald's and Burger King, who are both trying to decide whether or not they want to advertise their burgers. If McDonald's and Burger King each do not advertise their food, they'll make a profit or a payoff of $5. However, if one of the restaurants advertises and the other does not, the one that advertises will make more money or have a higher payoff than the one who does not advertise, and the one that does not advertise will lose some profit. However, if both companies advertise, they'll both make less profit than they would have otherwise because of the cost of advertising. From this, we can set up what we call a payoff matrix. Once we have a payoff matrix, we can find what the best options are for each restaurant by fixing the other restaurant to each option. Let's look at the problem from the perspective of McDonald's. If Burger King advertises, McDonald's has two options. They can also advertise for a profit of $4, or they can not advertise and collect only $2 in profit. In the case that Burger King advertises, McDonald's would want to advertise as well to maximize their payoff, with $4 being greater than $2. Now, what if Burger King does not advertise? McDonald's has the option of advertising for a profit of $10, or not advertising for a profit of $5. In this case, again, McDonald's will advertise. So now we know that no matter what Burger King does, McDonald's will advertise. This is what we call in economics, and specifically in game theory, a dominant strategy. Now we can do the same from Burger King's perspective. Again, we see that Burger King maximizes its profits when McDonald's advertises by advertising themselves. And when McDonald's does not advertise, Burger King will still choose to advertise to maximize their profits. This means that Burger King also has a dominant strategy to advertise. The blocks where we have underlined both payoffs are called equilibria. Now let's expand this matrix by including a third option. McDonald's can now lower prices if they advertise. Now let's look at Burger King's perspective first. If McDonald's chooses to do nothing, then Burger King will choose to advertise in order to maximize their profits. However, if McDonald's chooses to advertise and not lower their prices, then Burger King will also advertise, and it is still their best option in this row. But lastly, if McDonald's advertises and lowers their prices, then Burger King's best option is to not advertise and instead do nothing, as that results in the highest profit in this row. Now, we can do the same from McDonald's perspective of Burger King's two options. If Burger King chooses to do nothing, then McDonald's will advertise and keep prices the same, as that maximizes their profits. However, if Burger King does advertise, then McDonald's will advertise and lower their prices, as that will result in the highest possible payoff for McDonald's. Now, we can see from this payoff matrix that there is no equilibrium in this game, because not one square has both selections underlined. Now, let's assume that Burger King is indifferent to either option when McDonald's lowers prices and advertises. Now, we have an equilibrium where Burger King advertises and McDonald's advertises and lowers prices. So now that we have a basic game theory example under our belts, let's switch to Pokemon. For those of you that don't know, Pokemon is a game where you and your opponent both have six monsters, each with up to two types and four moves. The types interact in a variety of ways that I won't explain, but I'll put it on the screen here for anyone that's interested. It's not super important, but what we're interested in is in the total number of Pokemon in our party and the number of moves we can choose. In total, this makes for nine different options. There's one more thing we should think about before we create a battle situation. All Pokemon have a speed stat that determines when they get to act each turn. If my Pokemon's speed stat is higher than yours, my Pokemon will act first. Pokemon also have a bunch of other statistics that calculate how much damage is done by each attack, but for now, for the sake of simplicity, we will say that a super effective attack does 100% damage, a neutral attack does 50% damage, an attack that is not very effective does 25% damage, and an attack that a Pokemon is immune to, think an electric type hitting a ground type, or a normal type hitting a ghost type, for example, those will deal zero damage. Okay, I think we're ready to set our Pokemon stage. Let's propose we have two trainers. One who has a Pikachu, and the other one who has a Squirtle. Pikachu has Thunderbolt, Tackle, Iron Tail, and Volt Tackle as its moves, and Squirtle has Water Gun, Tackle, Ice Beam, and Bite. Let's also assume that Pikachu is faster than Squirtle. Let's look at just the attacks first. Regardless of what Squirtle chooses to do, if Pikachu chooses to use Thunderbolt or Volt Tackle, Squirtle will lose 100% of its health before it is able to act. Remember that type chart from earlier? I lied about it not being important. 
Let's put this down in the payoff matrix form we talked about earlier for game theory. Next, let's look at what happens when Pikachu doesn't use Thunderbolt or Bolt Tackle. Let's look at Tackle first. If Pikachu uses Tackle, then Squirtle takes 50% of its health for taking a neutral hit and retaliates back with an attack of its own, any of which are also neutral hits, taking 50% of Pikachu's health. The same situation occurs when Pikachu chooses to use Iron Tail, except Pikachu's attack only does 25%, because Iron Tail is resisted by Squirtle. Let's put these into the payoff matrix as well. From here, we can find our equilibrium outcome fairly easily. We know that Pikachu has a dominant strategy. Use Thunderbolt or Volt Tackle, regardless of what Squirtle chooses to do. Squirtle does not have a dominant strategy. In fact, Squirtle is indifferent to any of its attacks, regardless of what Pikachu does. If Pikachu uses an electric type move, it won't get to act anyway, and if it doesn't, Squirtle will deal 50% of Pikachu's health with any move it chooses. Now we have our equilibrium. Pikachu will defeat Squirtle, either with Thunderbolt or Volt Tackle. However, we're missing one key option that we mentioned earlier that both trainers have instead of attacking. Switching. Switching completely changes our payoff matrix. Let's assume that the trainer with the Squirtle also has a Geodude. Geodude is immune to electric type moves and only takes 25% from Pikachu's tackle. However, Geodude takes 100% from Pikachu's Iron Tail because steel moves like Iron Tail are super effective against Geodude, who is a rock type. Let's also add that the trainer with a Pikachu can switch to Goldeen. Pikachu using Thunderbolt or Volt Tackle are not dominant strategies anymore due to the addition of the opposing Geodude. That's the most obvious change to the matrix, but let's look at the Pikachu trainer's options first. When Squirtle uses any move, Pikachu's best option is still to use its electric type attacks. However, when Squirtle chooses to switch to Geodude, Pikachu's best option is now to use Iron Tail, which would then result in the same situation as before, where Pikachu faces Squirtle and Squirtle can't switch to anything. What is the payoff for the Pikachu trainer of switching to Goldeen? This is a little bit more abstract and harder to visualize. In each case where Squirtle stays in and attacks, Goldeen comes in and takes either 25% if Squirtle uses Water Gun or Ice Beam, and 50% if Squirtle uses a different move. We'll call these A for the 25% option and B for the 50% option. If both players switch, we'll call this option C. And we'll talk about the exact values of these in just a moment. Now let's look at Squirtle's perspective. If Pikachu uses an electric type move, Squirtle should switch to Geodude. However, if Pikachu uses Iron Tail, Squirtle should stay in an attack, because the trade in damage is in its favor, and switching Geodude into an Iron Tail would result in a KO on Geodude. If Pikachu uses Quick Attack, then Squirtle could either trade damage or switch to Geodude. We'll say that Squirtle is indifferent between these two. Now let's figure out our equilibrium using the payoff matrix like before, and it looks like we have… none? Well, it depends on how much the trainer's value board states A, B, C we mentioned earlier. If the trainer with the Pikachu decides that board state B has more or the same value as knocking out Squirtle, then we have an equilibrium of the Pikachu switching to Goldeen and the Squirtle trainer using a neutral move. Well, as long as the Squirtle trainer's payoff for switching to Geodude isn't higher than doing damage to Goldeen. This should not be the case, however, because if Goldeen and Geodude switch in at the same time, Goldeen gets free damage on Squirtle or a knockout into Geodude with Water Gun. But what happens when there is no equilibrium? In that case, trainers will choose their strategies based on what they think the other trainer will choose. So far, we've simply looked at all the options each trainer has and looked for their best responses. This is called pure strategy. Choosing based on the probability of each move being made is a different topic altogether. In Pokemon, we call this making a read. In economics, we call that mixed strategies, where each option has a probability of being selected, as opposed to the pure strategies we have observed so far. We'll get into that in the next video, but I think that's enough for now.